say a life worth living. When you think of your life, what makes you happy? What makes you smile? What motivates you to get up in the morning? What got you here? If any of you are thinking money, or the potential to earn money, you're totally talking to the wrong person, because I'm a teacher. I get paid in smiles. People are motivated by family and by friends. Relationships are what makes us tick. We crave it, we're wired for it, we want to be social. We want to connect, contribute, and belong. Everyone. Matt Lieberman, a biobehavioral science professor at UCLA, has shown that we are definitely wired to be social. And the social interactions that we make in our lives greatly impact our workplaces, our schools, and our overall personal well-being. This topic is near and dear to my heart. As you know, I am a teacher. But to be more specific, I'm a special education teacher. I work with high school age students with moderate to severe disabilities. People want to belong to a community. Individuals with disabilities are no different. Community members connect with each other. They belong. Today I'm going to talk about disability inclusion. And I want to pose a question to you. Do all your community members belong? According to the CDC's findings on disability prevalence in 2013, one in every five adults in the United States has a disability. If you do the math, that's 53 million people. Not quite the population size of South Africa. So, I want to ask you, do you know someone with a disability in your life? Meet Nick. He's one of my students. He's a high school senior and he's preparing to enter the workforce very soon. He's nonverbal and he speaks with assistance with a communication device. Here he is participating in my district's special athletics basketball event. And I want to share a secret about Nick. He hates basketball. My high school men's basketball team wanted to come along and we were thrilled. We brought them along, they refereed, they took score, they kept time, but there were quite a few differences on the sidelines between them. They all fought over the position of helping students on the court. They not just helped my students, there were over 200 high school students there participating. They helped everyone shoot, dribble, pass. But the most important part of their contribution is they gave lots of encouragement and praise. So take a look at Nick, the man who hates basketball. He obviously didn't mind playing that day when he had his peers helping and supporting him. Individuals with disabilities are often expected to complete menial tasks after high school. After graduation, sheltered workshops will often hire these individuals to do tasks like folding letters, stuffing envelopes, packaging small items. Custodial work is also common. Can you imagine preparing for your lifelong career and the end result is you clean toilets? For some individuals, these positions might be a good fit, but it's not uncommon that individuals with disabilities and their vocational careers are not suited to their preferences or their strengths. I have another student of mine for you to meet. His name is Dorian. Can you point out Dorian? And I'll give you a hint. He has a football uniform on. If you can't, that makes me very happy because that's the point. Last year, Dorian tried out for two sports teams. The first sport he tried out for was basketball. He got cut. The second sport, he made the team. He ran anchor for his track and field relay team. Very recently, one of Dorian's team members came up to me and voiced some concerns about Dorian. He was worried that Dorian was being bullied. Okay, tell me more. 
So his teammate said that he had heard Dorian's name around different conversation circles on campus, and not in a positive way. So he wanted to make sure that I was looking into it, and he wanted to assure me that Dorian was looked after. This made me very happy. Was, I was very tearful that day. This proved to me that Dorian belonged on campus. Because of friendships like this, Dorian's whole life changed. He was supported on campus. He was looked after. He had fun. People to text, people to have lunch with. All students deserve that. This year, he's a sophomore. He tried out for football, and he made the JV team. Three times, Dorian was the team captain this past season. His football teammates made no special accommodations for him. Dorian's physical efforts were of no concern. He could do anything anyone asked of him physically. Both of his coaches sang his praises as an athlete, used phrases like 110%, never complains. He even earned the most inspirational player award this season. What I didn't tell you is that Dorian seriously struggles with communication. When I first met Dorian last year, he often grunted, would shake his head. I'd call on him in class, and he'd shrug his shoulders, even though I knew, pretty sure he knew the answer. Because he had all those sports practices, his mom got him a smartphone. And like most teenagers, you get a smartphone, you immediately get an Instagram account. So I was happy to follow Dorian and see what he cared about. And soon after, I unfollowed him. I hated the things he posted. They were awful. I, he filled up my feed. He blew it up several times a day. My feed was filled with Power Rangers and Transformers. I followed him. I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. So in class, I pulled him aside, and I told him what I did and why I did it. And as a teacher, you may know that sometimes teachers give unsolicited suggestions. So I suggested that he fill his feed and post pictures of people and activities that he loved. Then I would follow him. Well, if you know Dorian, like I know Dorian, he wouldn't let that go. Later that week, he wanted to make sure that uh, in front of the class, he had to say. He showed everyone that he managed three Instagram accounts with over 2,000 followers each. He was very happy to point out that I only had 250. And I told him, I'll shut up now. I guess I know nothing. Both of these students have autism, and they love to come to school. Unfortunately, not because of the lovely sound of my voice or the wonderful assessments and tests I give them, but they come to school to be with their friends. They feel safe and supported. Individuals with disabilities will typically attend school till the age of 22. The classes that they take after graduation focus on them finding a job. For fun, these adults stay home, play video games, Netflix, eat. Sounds fun, right? Wait. Outside of their own families, Individuals that hang out with these adults are typically paid to be around them and to supervise them. If someone's paid to be around you, that relationship is stigmatized from the start. It's not authentic. Everyone deserves authentic relationships in their lives. Students without disabilities can learn life-changing skills as well. Can you imagine on your school campus, a poster up and the headline says, learn skills colleges want, not taught in that advanced placement class. Peer buddies to individuals with disabilities can learn to be better communicators, 
and to be overall better leaders. Colleges are actively seeking students who demonstrate kindness, compassion, and concern. There are many ways that you can include individuals with disabilities into your community without making it a good deed or a project. You can start on your campus today and ask a special education teacher if they know of a student who is in need of a friend. You can go online. Check out resources like Best Buddies. They're the leading organization for integrated relationships. It's a good place to start. Join your peer buddy group on campus. Invite someone to have lunch with you. Take a new friend to a school event with you and your friends. Include them. Get their email address. Like a picture on social media. But don't let it stop there. Get to know them. Let's level up as shared stakeholders in our community. It's not going to be comfortable. Do something for your community worth putting yourself in your discomfort zone. What I'm asking you isn't new. It's not rocket science. It's a challenge. A challenge to be kind by being an example. Instill love, not pain. And respect individuals with disabilities. Promote a life worth living for everyone.